Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to another of the series of ARIS tutorial videos. My name is J.M. Erlinson, a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG, and today we're talking about the interface between ARIS and Software AG's leading enterprise architecture and program portfolio management tool, Alphabet. Now, ARIS and Alphabet exist in an ecosystem that connects business and IT together, helping to provide each their own interface that helps them maximize the value of the time they spend designing, creating, sharing, and ultimately deciding on architecture and business processes. Now, here we are in ARIS. Let's figure out how we can get into Alphabet and find out more information about the applications that are supporting our, compo or our core processes. Now, to do that, we have this concept called interoperability. ARIS and Alphabet work seamlessly to move between the two tools to help provide the interface that matters most when you need to see it. So for that, I'm going to go to my business processes remaining in ARIS as I go down the different layers of my process hierarchy. When I get to my enterprise process map, I'm going to select one of my lower level scenarios, trading, heading down a couple of layers to get to my trading process asset class trading. Now, in this model, I've got a, a bunch of different steps that are being performed by different people and by different systems. But for me as a business architect, I need to know a certain amount of information about how things are working. But if I need to know more, I can navigate seamlessly to some more details, particularly about my architecture located in the alphabet tool set. To do that, I simply click on any of these objects. And on the right side, I open up my, my properties panel. Now you can see one of these objects has navigate to uh, application in alphabet. One of the attributes is navigate to application in alphabet. That's following the alphabet link that's automatically brought in as you synchronize between the two systems, which I'll show a little bit later. If I click on the link, you'll see it'll open up the tab that opens up alphabet and sends the information to you about how the application actually fits into the landscape and works with the rest of your architecture and ecosystem, including all of the different standard alphabet, alphabet tabs you've decided are important for how you're cataloging and categorizing your application. Now, while this may be a lot of information for a business architect to take in, helping to see everything in context and provide that comprehensive view really gives you the power to make the right kind of decisions. Oh, let me take a look at my overlap between this application and others, or let me take a look at the demands and projects that are coming about this application. Of course, it becomes a conversation about the kind of data and the format in which the data is stored in Alphabet. However, here's a question. How do I get that information into ARIS, and how do I make sure that that, that information is represented through the links inside the ARIS platform's models? Well, it's as simple as editing and synchronizing through a RESTful API that we've got synchronized over with Alphabet. So not only interoperability, as in you can navigate between the tools uh, seamlessly so your user experience isn't disrupted, but also synchronized. So for instance, if I were to create a new application system, you see as I place it on the page, a nice little box opens up that lets me select from Alphabet. So it's going to dynamically query against the Alphabet database for the available applications that I can select, as well as their versions. I can filter them down. I can look them up. Let's say I wanted to select, uh, let's, let's select CAMS2 version 3.0. I'll hit OK, and I'm actually mapping in an Alphabet object that's being reused. Now look at where, what, what it's provided me. Information about this application, as well as a live link to the Alphabet system and to the alphabet identifier and all the different attributes that I've chosen to bring in from alphabet. So in this way, we've synchronized things directly to ARIS and makes it very easy for you to quickly navigate over to alphabet and find out all the things you want to know. Now, the, the same is true for alphabet. On the opposite side, alphabet allows you to go in and take a look at how the business processes are done inside ARIS. And so in Alphabet, there are a bunch of different links, for instance, asset class training as a business capability in Alphabet or a business process in Alphabet has links to the ARIS diagrams that fully describe it. So as you might imagine, if I were to click on one of these diagrams, well, that takes me right back to ARIS. And so I've managed to be both interoperable, as in you can pull, you can, you can as a user, jump between systems in seconds, and synchronized to keep all the data up to date and ready to go for both Alphabet 
and Eris. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. A lot more can be synchronized back and forth between those two systems. You can choose which information is held where, which is the master, what, and whether or not it's a batch synchronization or it is a synchronous pull as you access the information in Eris or in Alphabet. But the point is, it's easy to access, easy to use, and synchronizes your business and IT seamlessly across the enterprise. And that's Eris and Alphabet integrated in our environment. Once again, thank you so much for paying attention to these videos. Feel free to hit them up with comments in the, in the, the section below or contact Software AG if you have any more questions about Eris or Alphabet. I've been J.M. Erlinson. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time.